Hello everyone and welcome to a new video, which is the first in a little series about making a mint and white Rococo gown. Or really it's more of an ensemble since it will consist of a petticoat and a dress and probably hat because this is me we're talking about. But for today we'll be focusing on the petticoat as seen here. And this project idea was actually picked and voted on by my lovely patrons. And since the prompt was kind of vague, I chose to take inspiration from two fashion plates that I'll link below, as well as the fabrics that I bought for this project which include 10 yards of taffeta in the color Orchard from Silk Baron, a bunch of mesh from Joann's that has embroidered butterflies on it, as well as three-dimensional butterflies made from thread. This fabric is such a delight. I love it. For trimming, I'll be using striped polyester organza, and I've also purchased artificial butterflies, pastel flowers, and pink ribbons to decorate this ensemble. And as you may have guessed by my material choices, this project isn't going to be super historically accurate. I'm definitely adding a fantastical twist to it. Now I started, as always, by draping the pattern on my dress form, then I used the drape fabric as a guide for cutting out the base layer of my petticoat, which is really more of an underskirt, so that's probably the term I'm going to use throughout this video. My drape pattern didn't have seam allowances, so I made sure to add those when cutting the fabric out. And speaking of fabric, I'm actually cutting this panel, which will be the front of the skirt, from a white cotton sateen that I had in my stash. The back of the skirt, however, was cut from the taffeta, mostly since I didn't have any cotton sateen left. I realize it's difficult to see, but here I'm draping the striped organza over top of the cotton sateen skirt panel to form an overlay, then roughly cutting it to size before pinning around all the edges. I sewed around all the edges too, then cut the organza down to perfectly match the size of the cotton sateen layer, and I find doing this after sewing the layers together is much easier. Now I'm top stitching twill tape one quarter inch away from the raw edge of the hem on the cotton sateen panel on the right side. The twill tape was folded inward, then top stitched down to form a neat and tidy hem. The twill tape adds a bit of stiffness too, which offers a bit of support to the underskirt. And as you might have noticed, by the fact I'm not hand sewing this hem, this project was made a little less carefully than my previous 18th century petticoat, which was almost entirely hand sewn over the span of a week. By comparison, this skirt is almost completely machine sewn and came together in a single afternoon. Since I was taking more of a fantasy inspired approach to this project, I felt less tied to historical techniques and finishings. Plus, I thought it made for a more interesting video since it's so different in terms of construction than my last underskirt despite being such similar garments. The skirt is going to feature an overlay of butterfly fabric, but when trimmed the butterfly fabric has a jagged hem, which I thought would look sloppy across the actual hem of the skirt. So I decided the butterfly fabric would sit 8 inches above the ground, with the hem of the skirt decorated with an organza ruffle instead, so I went ahead and cut strips of organza. I ironed the bottom edge inward, then folded it inward once again and stitched it down by machine. I gathered the top edge of the strip down to a third of its original length by machine to form it into a ruffle. And to do this, I'm just pushing the fabric underneath the presser foot as I sew. You won't see the top edge of the ruffle, so it didn't need to be gathered perfectly. Now I'm pinning the ruffle onto the centermost half of the front panel, so the hem of the ruffle is level with the hem of the skirt. And the sides of the front panel will be covered by the dress, so the only part that needs elaborate trimmings is the center 30 inches or so. And once positioned, the ruffle could be sewn on. Now it's time for the overlay of butterflies, but first the excess mesh near the hem of the fabric had to be trimmed away, and the mesh doesn't fray, so this didn't have to be hemmed, just trimmed. I laid the butterfly fabric on top of the front panel and aligned the butterflies where I wanted them near the hem. Then I cut the panel to match the size of the front panel and pinned around the top and side edges. However, the top edge of the ruffle was really visible through the mesh since it was so sheer. It didn't look as magical and effortless as I wanted, so I cut a piece of butterfly fabric to match the width of the front panel, but only about 12 inches long. Then I trimmed excess mesh from the hem. I flipped up the full length butterfly overlay and pinned this 8 inches or so above the ruffle so its hem just covered the top of the ruffle and diffused the appearance of the gathers. Then it was sewn on. Thank you. 
and now I could finally sew the full length piece of mesh on around the waist of the panel. Now the front panel is finished, so it's time to play catch up with the back panel, which is thankfully a great deal simpler. It really just needed to be hemmed. Unlike my last underskirt, this one will open at the sides, and to make it easy to get on and off, I wanted the top 12 inches to be left open, and those openings will be bound with twill tape, which means they don't need seam allowance. So I'm trimming the seam allowance off the top 12 inches of the side edges of both the front and the back panels. Now I'm pinning the layers together with the wrong sides facing each other, and sewing them together with a half inch allowance. The seam was trimmed down to under a quarter inch, then I repinned the layers with the right sides facing each other and stitched the seams once again, forming French seams. Now I could bind the openings in the sides of the skirt, and I'm doing these by top stitching one side of twill tape to the fabric about one quarter inch away from the edge of the material. I'm taking it nice and slow around the corners since I don't want them to pucker. Then I'm folding the twill tape over the raw edge of the fabric and stitching the other side down so the raw edge is encased and neatly finished. Now the top edge can be gathered down and I gathered each side down to half my waist measurement. And traditionally 18th century skirts or petticoats are pleated instead of gathered, but the fashion plates I was referencing had so much volume to them. They were obviously still worn over panniers with a wide silhouette, but looked fluffier and rounder than traditional court dresses. And I thought gathering the skirts evenly all the way around might imitate that better than pleats. Once the pieces were gathered to size, I bound the top edges, and the front and back panels were bound independently. I also left 15 inch tails of twill tape that extend past the edges of the skirt to be used as ties. When the twill tape is turned inward and sewn to bind the edges, I'm also turning inward the tails slash part that extends past the edges of the skirt, and sewing that in half as well. And that was repeated on the back panel. And that was it! Here you can see the openings in the side and the ties around the waist. And here you can see the skirt in all its glory. I'm really happy with the layering of the fabric and how the mesh flows into the organza. It really looks like butterflies are flying up the skirt and it makes me really excited to work on the rest of this project. I think it will be magical. If you're interested in seeing the rest of this project, then you should subscribe, and hopefully I'll have the next installment up sometime soon. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, then giving this video a like or a comment really helps me out, and I shall talk to all of you very soon.